Have you ever wondered how your written word sounds in the real world before hitting the big screen? Huh? Huh? Well, let me tell you. Today is all about mastering table reads. Uh, writer's Guide to Real World Feedback. Okay, so we're on the next step of the script writing. And you say to yourself, but Tom, why is that important? Well, a table read can be an invaluable tool for writers offering a live snapshot of how your script performs in a real world setting. And, uh, you know, you could do some adjustments and stuff like that. Now, I, I, I will have to say, excuse me, this is going to be different than a read through or, um, or a table read where it's just you, uh, and some, uh, people you trust. <clears throat> this is going to be more of a, they're still going to read the script. They're still going to have the script in front of them. <clears throat> but now you're going to have an audience, a small audience, and you're going to have performers. So that brings me to what is a table read? So this, because I know that a table read is within the steps. This is a different kind of table read. This is more of a performance table read. And this table read involves actors reading your script aloud in a controlled setting. And typically there's an audience uh, that's going to be present. Uh, this allows you to gauge the pacing, dialogue, delivery, and overall narrative impact of your script on an audience listening to an emotional presentation. Now we're going to go through a couple things before I show you basically uh, how to set up the table read, th you know, things you should be looking at, uh, getting the right actors, and then some questions uh, for the table read. Okay. Um, and before we do that, I always like to give some tips and tricks uh, to get your brain thinking and getting you ready. So <clears throat> let's, uh, let's get into it. Maximizing table read. The short of it is, uh, you know, encourage actors to prepare their roles to bring depth to the reading, uh, which enhances the experience for both the writer and the audience. You want to engage with the audience, uh, you know, post read to gather diverse feedback on various script elements. So let's talk about the long of it. You know, we're going to reiterate a few of those things. We're going to, so, you know, by encouraging actors to prepare. Uh, to understand their characters deeply, give them the script a few days before, or maybe even a, a month before. It's up to you, you know, but definitely give it to them before, not the, the day before and not the day of, and let them kind of do their prep. You know, this preparation helps highlight nuances and dialogue and character interactions that may not be apparent from a, a, a you know, a curious read through. I would also suggest giving them notes, you know, sitting with the uh, maybe doing a table read with the actors privately, just on, a, you know, maybe even give it to them first uh, uh, at the table read. And you say, all right, let's read through it and then uh, let's get some questions going. And then now they could go work home and work on it using your notes uh, and develop the character as needed. Right. <clears throat> but this also helps with the quality of performance. You know, by preparing your actors, they can now deliver lines with the intended emotions and help with pacing, offering a clearer picture of how each scene plays out, which is crucial for assessing the script's impact. You are basically the director in the situation, helping them learn what the feel of the script is before the performance happens. You know, and you could use this opportunity to gather real time reactions because the audience is reacting to an emotional truth being present in the characters that are coming to life at the table read and obviously the post read discussion this is where you would be able to conduct a q a session directly after the read uh and dive deeper into the audience impressions while it's still fresh okay i would also recommend recording the session uh obviously get their approval get the actor's approval and get the audience's approval and have a camera on the audience and a camera on the read through now the short of it is Always record the table reading, especially uh, with the permission, uh, either through just audio or video. I prefer video because I like to go back and, and, and see reaction because sometimes reactions are not audible. Sometimes it's, you know, or it's, you know, or they're crying, you know, <laughs> and you can't hear them. They're just they're having they're being affected by it. Right. So this allows you to revisit the performance later and catch nuances you might have missed during the live session. Now, the long of it is by recording the sessions, you allow yourself to catch subtleties and nuances that are delivered that you might miss during the actual live reading. Because you as the writer are probably listening and taking notes still. You're probably looking around. To, you know, there's a lot going on. Right. 
Uh, and this is especially useful for the revision specific segment. Uh, <laughs> this is especially useful for revisiting specific segments to analyze dialogue delivery and actor interpretation. Maybe it'll change the way you look at it. Oh, I like the way they were actually doing that moment. Um, oh, they ad libbed a little bit. They didn't say it exactly as it was written, but I like the way they say it. It feels a little bit more natural and that changes your dialogue, you know? And then you could use the recordings to conduct a detailed review of the read at your own pace, allowing for a thorough analysis of pacing, timing, and emotional delivery. I do this for, well, not anymore, but I used to do this for comedy, music, uh, anything. Anything I did live, I would always uh, record myself, even performing theater. All right, number three, key observations during the reading. Now, the short of it, pay attention to the audience reactions and actor deliveries. Note any moments where the pacing feels off or dialogues don't seem to resonate <clears throat> as intended. Observe the clarity of the story and character int intentions through character, through the actor's performance. I'll repeat that. Observe the clarity of the story and character intentions through the actor's performances. <clears throat> now, the long of it, by paying attention to how the audience reacts to different parts of the script, now you get to say to yourself, are they captivated during high-tension scenes? Do jokes land as intended? Noting these reactions can guide significant revisions, okay? especially if you expected a reaction from the audience, which is something you should place into your script. So you're looking at the notes and not necessarily trying to remember anything, have near lines go, this should be a laugh. This should be emotional. This should be whatever, you know, actor interpretations. You know, this also allows you to observe how actors interpreted their roles and deliver their lines, which can provide insight into whether the character's motivations and emotions are effectively conveyed. Uh, the other thing is, you get to assess whether the story's major themes and character arcs are clear to the audience. Listen for moments of confusion or misinterpretation. I would also keep in mind that some of your questions should be related to uh, character arcs. You know, And again, remember, people who watch or listen or read or do anything that are audience-based don't necessarily know the terminology. So you have to always approach character arcs and development in a different way. You could ask them specific questions. Did you feel that, uh, you know, when the character reached this enlightened moment, did it feel earned? You know, and if the answer is yes, then you know the character arc worked. Number four, effective audience engagement. You know, the short of it, prepare specific questions, which brings us to uh, that allows you to ask audiences post read. Focus on areas where you want feedback specifically, such as character believability, which I just mentioned, plot clarity, and emotional impact. Consider anonymous feedback forms for more candid responses instead of putting your audience on the spot. Now, the long of it is you should be developing specific questions that target areas of concern within your script, such as those character believability moments, plot complexity, especially, you know, like if you're writing something like mementos, <laughs> It's pretty complex. So plot questions are important. Uh, the other thing is that anonymous feedback form is important if you want to consider uh, a little bit more honesty. Because uh, believe it or not, sometimes uh, when people can kind of just say their piece, it's a little easier for them to get the words out. Uh, this method can sometimes yield more candid and useful responses, helping you identify issues people might not feel comfortable discussing openly. All right, so before we go through the walkthrough, uh, you know, if you're enjoying this lesson and the other lessons that are on this channel and want more insight on fine tuning your writing skills, uh, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. All right, let's do it. Walk through. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a table read. Let's get to the shared screen. Yeah. Share that bad boy. All right, there we go. All right, pre-production. Let's talk about pre-production. The script. All right, so some things you want to keep in mind is you want to make sure the script is indeed polished. All right, ensure that this script is a final draft quality. Uh, it doesn't, uh, not so much in a sense of uh, it has to be perfect. But when I say polished, I mean, again, you're already, um, 
this should be the fourth draft of your script that, uh, uh, or I should say, uh, this is, yeah, this is your fourth draft of the script when it comes to writing. And it's already done a lot of heavy lifting. So uh, some things you want to do just for the consistency of the read through is just go through and make sure proofreading, uh, you know, for typos, grammatical errors and formatting consistencies. You want to make sure the pages are numbered and, uh, you know, consider making copies, you know, decide if the actors will bring their own copies, you know, but uh, hey, don't be that way. Or you could provide them, uh, you know, uh, in providing, uh, you know, Maybe uh, you could tell them they could read from a tablet or something, you know, whatever's cost efficient. The other thing is assembling the cast. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, you could do this in several different ways. If you've never really done this before, there's a thing called casting calls. You just put an open casting call out there. You could do that through social media. You could do that through, you know, backstage. You could do that through, uh, you know, casting networks. There are so many different ways you could do it. I personally, uh, I try to reach out to my friends first, uh, you know, especially if they have the right voice for the characters. If you have nobody in mind, uh, I would recommend doing a casting call. Um, you know, I would also create a character breakdown sheet, all right, which describes uh, who the character is, which will help the actors decide how to present that character. And of course, uh, as a writer, you should have a long list of uh, directors, producers, uh, sound people, right? But among all the crew, you should also have a list of actors. Um, so I would recommend getting one of those together uh, and staying in touch with people and keeping in touch with them through newsletters or, you know, emails or uh, texts from time to time. Anyway, now the next thing you want to do is prepare the space, you know? You want to find a quiet, well-lit space with a table and enough chairs for everybody. Or hopefully there's a small little uh, uh, um, sitting area for uh, the audience, you know, uh, maybe uh, maybe benches or something, you know, like the rising benches or rising seats. Maybe it's a small stage area, whatever the case may be. And uh, this will allow you to decide on the seating arrangement, especially if it is a small audience. I would recommend also thinking about the table setup. Where is the main leads? I'd probably put him in the center of the table. Remember, you also want the actors uh, sitting on one side of the table so uh, the audience is looking at them. Not that the actors have to look up from the table and perform for the audience, um, but they can. You could also take away the table and just have them perform on the stage, but that takes a lot more work, so I would stick with the table. Uh, and organizing, you know, like it's the Last Supper. You know, everybody has a spot, right? <laughs> Put the, you know, Jesus in the middle. You know what I'm saying? All right. And then uh, you want to prepare for the reading. Now, the ways you prepare for the reading is, you know, you want to assign a script reader to handle stage direction and character changes if needed. You know, uh, this is for more complex scripts. But think about uh, you don't want one of the actors doing dialogue and then also going and Jacob stepped into the room. <laughs> have somebody else doing that kind of reading all right uh, I, and again you don't want to be doing that because you should be paying attention all right now also schedule plan a clear schedule for the table read including estimated duration and break times if necessary you know if your script is an eight hour script andy uh andy warhol uh you know you might want to adjust that me personally this is optional but i love doing it is i provide refreshments uh water is always a win coffee is a win uh i like sodas sometimes uh light snacks for the actors and the audience all for free everyone is coming there to help you uh you know what i'm saying okay production day this is a whole other thing all right so now we, we've gone past the uh pre-production uh we got the script together we got we assembled the cast we prepared the space and we prepared for the reading so now we have production day Welcome and introduction. You should stand up. Stand up. All right. Uh, and briefly introduce yourself, the actors and the project. Okay. Don't give too much away, but at the same time, let people understand what's going on. I might even suggest uh, reiterating that after the, uh, the reading, uh, you're going to ask the audience some, some questions. So please, uh, pay attention to the performance in a way and whatever really hits you or touches you or you really like or 
you know, uh, keep those things in mind and we'll talk about it. Uh, we have an honest opportunities for people to just write their thoughts down or you can openly talk. It's up to you. But then you start the table read. Dum, 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 and this is where you start the actual table read. Encourage actors to ask questions or clarify things if needed before the table read. So when you're doing the prep, when they're going over the script, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. don't do it. Don't don't break the illusion of the performance. <clears throat> Tell them to stay in character as best as possible. Okay. I would even almost suggest uh, having a lighting person handling the mood and adjusting it depending on the scene. Um, if you're not going to have lighting, you know, maybe you want to have a little sound cues, you know, it's up to you. Like create an ambiance, you know, and then of course the feedback, which is optional, but I would recommend uh, if you're comfortable enough, open the floor for constructive feedback after the reading, you know, because that's ultimately why you're there. <clears throat> now let's talk about post post production post-production all right do, 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 do. i don't want to look at that yet all right so thank you you want to express gratitude to your actors and audience for their time give a thank you speech at the end of the performance after the feedback after everything okay this is where like you're saying goodbye to people and you know maybe um Maybe there's an after read party or something, you know, it's not a huge party, but it's like 30 minutes where everybody can kind of like relax and, you know, uh, talk the, the, the audience could talk to the actors, et cetera, et cetera. All right. But you you definitely want to express your gratitude. An extra tip for this is to send everyone an email or uh, a text or something. But uh, from the audience to the readers, if you are able to contact them, I would do individual emails are ultimately the best. A text is even better, especially for the performance. But a group email or a private newsletter to them works really well too. And of course, social media is going to help. You know, tagging everybody and and and, and uh, you know showing your support for them. All right. Notes. Comply. All right. C comply. Compile. Compile. Any notes or feedback received for script revisions. So put everything together. Make sure that it's all uh, you're going to organize it and uh, start putting some work into it. OK. And because you recorded uh, the read through. I would organize that recording, you know, so the re because you recorded the table read for reference during revisions, uh, I would my the first watch through. I would uh, dictate things, all right? I would dictate, uh, you know, what scene it is. So scene one starts at this time. Um, if something hits you, uh, I would I would stop the tape and write, all right, something, uh, look at this again at this time, right? And just do a nice, without really putting a lot of thought into it, but, you know, organize the rewatch into timestamps so you can then go back and really kind of focus on those moments, all right? And obviously make sure everybody involved has consented to the recording. Okay. And then uh, your job is to create a relaxed atmosphere overall. So encourage a collaborative and supportive environment for the actors and of course the audience. Okay. Even though that's post-production, I want you to, that's something uh, you, you should think about for the whole event. Okay. Now, Thomas, uh, how do you, uh, how do you get the right actors? That's a good question. It's a real good question. Uh, luckily, I have the answer. <laughs> things you got to do. Things you got to do. You got to know your characters, all right? You got to you gotta understand their age range, their personality traits, and any physical requirements for each character. Think about these things, okay? Uh, it's important to find the right actor for the right character. You also want to be able to spread the word, okay? You want to use utilize actor uh, platforms or local theater groups to post casting information. Social media can also be a good option. Get involved in your industry, and that'll get you around the people that you need to be talking to. All right? Headshots and resumes. Oh, yeah. I'm not really a big fan of headshots and resume, but a lot of people believe this is the way. This is the way. Uh, so it is an option that's out there for people because it is just a, uh, tool that exists. So you could just request headshots and resumes from interested actors. Tom, why don't you like them? Well, because resumes are lies. <laughs> 
and they don't say you know it could say on there you did hamlet you did macbeth you did romeo and juliet uh you know why i was on uh you know blue uh, whatever um uh, you know ncis but you know your background or an extra whatever <laughs> anyway uh headshots are good though especially if they're current and up to date just for uh the look you'd be like all right they looked apart but you know they have a look about them but ultimately there's a little bit more work in that, okay you want to prepare audition material all right prepare audition material if holding auditions, select specific scenes or monologues that showcase the range needed for the roles. Uh, what I like to do with this is uh, I will write uh, a page long scene that has multiple characters in it, uh, two to three, or even two pages and have two or three uh, characters. And what this does, it allows you to take the same scene and not only can you have three different actors read that same scene, uh, but you're seeing it at the front. And then when you start liking certain actors, you can then have those actors read that scene. And since they've been working on it and know it, now you get to see their choices in that scene. So, you know, if you have six char six characters you're trying to cast for and you have two full scene, two scenes written that are only two pages long, well, that's three actors per scene. So there you go, um, you know. Or whatever. You could write out three scenes, you know, mix characters up, whatever. Hold open auditions. I usually cast my friends, but uh, if you don't have friends that are actors or friends that you believe in or people that are able to do it, uh, then, you know, you got to allow new talent to be discovered, you know. And then once you discover them, make sure you keep them close by. You want them on your list. All right. The other thing is prepare for a large crowd. You know, sometimes... You want to have clear instructions and expectations for audiences. But, uh, you know, you might uh, you might want 10 people to show up and, uh, you know, you get 25. But sometimes you might want 40 to show up and you only get uh, 25. So you got to you got to prepare. You got to prepare for the big, uh, even if you get the small, uh, just as much as you got to prepare for the small, expecting to get the big, et cetera, et cetera. Understand where it's going to go with the audience size. You also want to consider time slots. You know, if time is limited, set up audition slots to avoid overwhelming wait times. All right. So let me go back to this. So again, preparing for large crowds, uh, you know, one time we had, we did a whole open audition and uh, we were expecting like maybe 20 people. And we had to fill up like three rooms just to hold them because you need holding space. You know, not everyone comes on time and not everybody gets seen on time. So uh, you got to prepare for the craziness. But you also want to go beyond the script. Look for actors who connect with the character's emotional core, not just the lines. You know, ask them questions. You know, let them do the read. If the read feels good, ask them questions. And that'll help. But try to keep the, uh, the readings quick and short, you know. I learned that the hard way. Chemistry is key. Pay attention to how actors interact during the audition, especially if there are scenes with other actors. A thing I like to do, especially if I am not known by anyone who's out there, I'll go into the rooms and I'll interact with people. And depending on how they treat me, you know, that'll change the whole thing. One time I went on the line and I was like, uh, <laughs> we were holding an audition, whatever. And I go on the line towards the end and I'm like, oh, what, what is this? What's going on? And like no one answered me at first. And I was like, is this uh what project is this for? And one of the kids turned back and they're like, uh <clears throat> we're we're trying, we're trying to memorize our lines here. And I was like, Oh, okay, okay. You're not allowed to uh go in there with the scripts, they're not letting you do cold reads. And they're like, the guy was like, ah, You can you can do a cold read, but you know, I wanna I wanna memorize. Oh, uh I don't I don't have a monologue or anything. Is it right if I use yours uh, when you're done? And the guy was like, listen. This is my opportunity. You got to do what you got to do to find your opportunity. And I knew that guy was not the right person uh, for us. However, there was a lovely woman that was next to him. And she was like, I have an extra scene, uh, if you would like. It, it's not a drama, a dramatic one. It's a comedy. They're looking for dramatic. But, you know, you can make comedy dramatic. And I was like, oh, thanks. I really appreciate that. Uh, and I was like, uh, you could keep the script. I, I'm, I, thank you for that. 
And I was like, but I, I have to go in the room now. And they're like, what? <laughs> and I just got off the line and walked around and went into the door and sat there. And then as soon as the, the guy walked in, he was like, uh, should I uh, should I read or uh, should I just leave? And I was like, well, why don't you read? Let me see what this feels like. And uh, after he read, I was just like, yeah, it was probably not going to work because we're a team rise together mentality. It's all about everybody, not not any single person, you know, and I understand that you were trying to focus on memorizing your stuff. But one second to uh, be kind to somebody or inform them of something, especially uh, something like this uh, goes a long way, um, you know, so you got to think like that, you know, you want the right people on your project. You don't want egos. Anyway, be open to surprises, okay? Sometimes actors who might bring a fresh interpretation to the role uh, might change the way you look at it, as long as it stays true to the character's essence. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, again, when you cast a person, that's who's going to be the character, no matter what you believe is going on. If you're like, I have this character in my mind, they can only get close to that. They can never be that. So you have to find something in that actor or performer, or whatever, to uh, to be the thing you see in your character. It's very difficult for someone to be the thing you imagine in your head. So you have to be open to those surprises. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, be respectful of everyone's time, provide clear communication, uh, and respond promptly to inquiries. But also, when the table, the, when the um, the auditions are happening. Keep it going. Keep it moving. Don't spend too much time with too many actors. You know, record the sessions so, you know, you can look at them afterwards. And, of course, you want to enjoy that process. You know, it's all it's all about enjoying the process. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't have the screen going on. So there you go. If you want, pause. The you can literally pause it and just, just write all that down. All right, let's go to the last thing. Questions for the table read. Let's uh, let's bring this downstairs a little bit so you can have. Boop, 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 boop. All right. Questions for the table read. All right. There they are. Overall impressions. You know, I'm not going to read through all of them because they're on the screen. You could just kind of write them down. But, but ultimately, what was your overall impression of the story? Did the story feel engaging and hold your interest, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. You got some clarity questions here. Clarity. Did you understand the plot? Blah blah blah. blah. These are just thing. These are just question examples to get your brain thinking, get you thinking outside the box. Okay, uh, let's go to pacing. Pa now, all right. For, for, again, though, not everyone understands that pacing is defined by the speed at which information is presented to the audience. Instead of asking about "quote unquote" pacing, ask them if things ever felt rushed or slow, and were you able to hear, understand, and retain important information as it was presented. Did scenes kind of did emotional scenes uh, feel rushed? Did do you feel we uh, gave you enough time to understand what was going on? Like those those are important pacing questions. You know, like here example, did the transitions between scenes feel smooth? Were there any scenes that felt rushed or dragged? Right? You know, did did you have time? <clears throat> right. Another one is, did you have time? to process what was going on or was there too much information? And then the next scene had too much information, right? Emotional impact. All right. These are other questions you should really be thinking about. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, eh. additional prompts, you know, maybe you want to ask, uh, you know, what is one thing you would like to see more of in the script? What is one thing you would like to see less of in the script? How would you describe the overall tone of the story? And, and if people say it sucked, you know, and you are three things you should think about open discussion, feel free to open the floor for any additional comments or questions to the audience. You know, you don't always have to have a question. Sometimes people just say some great things. Uh, sometimes they don't, but uh, sometimes they do. Uh, you want to tell your questions. OK, you want them to remember uh, to ultimately the questions need to be about the specific genre and tone. If it's an action uh, script or if it's a romance script, there's certain different things you're looking. Did you believe in the romance of the romance? Uh, if it's action, you might be like, did the romance plot feel like it didn't need to be there? You know, like uh, whatever. Uh, but for example, for comedy, you might ask about specific jokes that landed well. While for drama, you might uh, focus on the emotional impact of certain scenes. You know, uh, 
Uh, did you know? Did you feel the crying? Did you feel the death scene? Did you feel the loss, etc.? And you have to be open to feedback because the most important thing is to approach the feedback session with an open mind. Be receptive to constructive criticism and use it as an opportunity to improve your script. You're not there to tell people that's wrong. You're there to listen and maybe ask questions. If you don't agree with something that somebody said, then you ask them to clarify. If somebody says, you know, the character just seemed like a douche and uh, they weren't the real protagonists. And you go, why do you feel they were not the real protagonists? And they go, because they are a douche. OK, well, why do you feel they were a douche? Well, they did these three things that I didn't really like. And what didn't you like about that? And it's OK to ask those questions because you might discover something. OK. All right. With that said, here's a question for you. What's one element of your writing you feel would benefit most from a Taylor read? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you found this video helpful uh, and videos like this on my page, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss out. And uh, you know, comment below. Let me know your thoughts. I love that kind of stuff. Final thoughts. Let's get through it. The power of a table read extends beyond simply hearing your script read aloud. It's an interactive experience that brings your script into the real world, providing a unique opportunity to gauge its effectiveness. Observing real-time reactions from both the readers and the audience offers invaluable insight that are hard to capture in solitude. This live feedback is crucial for understanding the emotional and psychological impact of your script on an audience. A table read is not just about testing dialogue or pacing. It's about experiencing the collective dynamics of your story. If offers of a holistic view of how your narrative elements plot, character development, dialogue, pacing, work together. Again, having the table read offers a holistic view of how your narrative elements work together. This is your plot, character development, dialogue, pacing, etc. This comprehensive perspective can reveal strengths to be enhanced and weaknesses to be addressed, providing a clear direction for further revisions. Um, you want to utilize feedback from your table read as a crucial part of your scripts, uh, you know, uh, refinement process. You know, each reading brings your script closer to its final form by highlighting what resonates with an audience and what falls flat. Embrace this process as a dynamic way to sculpt your narrative and characters into their most compelling forms. While it's important to take feedback from your audience into account, balance this with your own creative vision. Feedback, as we say on this channel, can guide and inform your revisions, but the core of your story should remain true to your artistic, your artistic intentions. Use feedback to refine and clarify your vision, not override it. Remember, feedback is a tool, not a rule. Feedback is a tool, not a rule. OK, uh, with that said, uh, you also want to keep in mind and be willing to experiment based on the feedback you receive, because every table read is a learning experience, a chance to make your script sharper, tighter and more engaging. So encourage yourself to view each reading as a step forward when mastering the craft of screenwriting. Uh, last step in the next video will be the fifth draft, rewriting the script using the new feedback. And we'll go over how to do that and why to do it and what's important about that. With that said, I want you to know that, uh, as always, uh, peace and harmony, truth in action, and uh, keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. I love you, boy.